Before I go into the code in detail, I just wanted to explain what my goal has been with this project. So I started off, the idea of this project was to make the simplest, cheapest possible power meter for my automatic shifter. So that was basically just to provide power data, which was then going to be converted into a cadence, which it then tries to maintain. So I've had lots of suggestions over the years using a better ADC, for example, and measuring RPM with an IMU. But to be honest, there are other factors which affect the accuracy far more than those. What I've actually found is that switching to the HX711, whilst it is far more convenient and easier to use, the actual quality of the power data isn't really significantly better than when I used an amplifier and the Arduino's 10-bit ADC. So there are other factors that really affect the accuracy of the power meter, such as temperature. If the power meter isn't zeroed, even just a kilogram can make a significant difference. It can be plus or minus 10 watts easily. Transfer of torque from the other crank, the opposite crank, um, across onto the crank that you're measuring. And these sort of factors take considerable time to try and compensate for. And so whilst I have tried to make efforts to make this power meter more accurate, I'm not intending to make it as accurate as commercially available power meters. That's a project that is just beyond what I've got the time um, to actually achieve. So having said that all, this is the code and I shall now briefly explain it all in as much detail as I can because it does actually work pretty well, for me anyway, um, for your peddling style it may be different. I'm going to go into quite a lot of detail in this code to explain everything in case that's useful to, to some people. But I know most of you are probably here just to answer the question, how do I get power? from a stream of ADC values. I'll get to that later, you can skip ahead if you want, but let's explain everything line by line. These are the libraries that, I'm in, that need to be included. I'm using the NRF Lite library, just because that worked for me when I first started using those modules. Now the big downside of this code is that it uses the NRF 24L01 module for transmission of the data. That obviously means you can't just receive that data on a cycle computer or a phone app. And so a future project of mine is to get AMP Plus working with this code. But to do that will require switching from the Arduino IDE to Sega Embedded Studio. I know it probably would make more sense to use Bluetooth Low Energy, but I'm quite like the idea of the challenge of ANT plus, and I prefer it as a communication method. Moving on, we have the pins that I'm using. I've got a power latch circuit and a button with a built-in LED. So that's LED on pin two and the button on three. And we're also reading the battery voltage on A7 by a potential divider. These are the important calibration values. So this is the main calibration value. Now that's the one you calculate from hanging a known weight of the crank. There's a brief description on how that's done here. But basically you get the ADC value change per kilogram and convert that into newtons and then convert it into torque using your crank length and we multiply that by two because this is a single sided power meter so that's the first area where you get error because obviously this is only a single sided power meter so you're just making the assumption that the other side is receiving the same torque then we move on to calculating the cadence this whole code timing and everything is based on the sample rate so this value here will need to be changed depending on your sample rate this works with 116 samples per second if yours is different you'll need to fine tune that and the third value is for the rising edge detection again that value 
let's see here assumes that you're getting 98 per kilogram of of force supplied to the crank which works out around about six kilograms to detect the rising edge and that works for me but it may be different for you here we have all the storage variables most of these are fairly self-explanatory we have some values here for smoothing code and other values that are used in the power calculations and code timing and debouncing etc I found that some smoothing was necessary to stop cadence spikes and also a bit of debouncing here on the cycle computer code which I'll go into in a minute assemble the data for a transmission by the radio initialize the radio and the HX711 the setup because I'm using a power latch that just holds the power meter on flash the LED set up the interrupt for the button now that's using code that's written by someone else so I'm not going to go into that radio pens the HX711 pins and we've got a gain we're using of maximum gain of 128 and that requires that you use channel A obviously this is just for the smoothing code it just sets all the values to zero this is transmitting out um, the radio data before we do the zero that was just an issue that I was having it may not be an issue anymore I haven't actually checked to do with power levels, power consumption by the radio is messing up the zero error, but that may be coming from the time when I used a amplifier. So moving on to the loop, and that basically consists of three switch cases and the zero error function and the button check function. Now we have switch case zero is basically button not pressed so that's the code that's running all the time switch case one is a short button press and that zero is the parameter and that uses this zero function here now basically minimum value I'm not sure why I called it that but that is basically the value the ADC puts out when there is zero force on the crank so to zero it I'm just taking 20 samples and the average of it that could probably do with being more than 20 because with higher sample rates you get a better average so that minimum value is quite important that's what all our um, torque values are calculated off um, obviously that value with zero force on the crank will not be zero that I can assure you of um, it, it changes quite a bit um, so it's a factors temperature and so on and then button case 2 is basically switch the power meter off so that unlatches the power latch circuit after flashing the LED once so let's go into the main part of the code and as I said the code basically the whole timing of the code is determined by the sample rate that we're receiving from the ADC so that's this function here the if function so if we're getting data we then do all of this following code. This first part here is smoothing the ADC value. And then we have the following part here is basically modified cycle computer code. Now that cycle computer code is I found to be very effective at getting a speed or a cadence from read switches but in this case here instead of a read switch closing I'm just using the rising edge detection here and so what we have is this section here which runs once per evolution and we have this bit here runs if no rotation is detected reset everything to zero and here is where we add up the torque value so we add it up and then we add one to the counter. Now if it detects the rising edge, we run this part of the code here, 
This bit here is for debouncing. Here we calculate the average torque value for the full rotation. So it's basically the total value, which we've been adding up below, divided by the counter. And from that, we can also we calculate the cadence. So that's that value we were looking at earlier in the important defines divided by the counter, and that gives us the cadence. That's all taken just from this section of code here. And these values are calculated once per revolution to then be later used in the power calculation, which occurs at a specified time interview, interval, and which we'll move on to next. So here we have this code timer, which, as I said, is all timed by the sample rate. So if your sample rate is different, these numbers here will need to be changed. These values work with 116 samples per second. This Basically, this section up here is just flashing the LED, so it flashes once every half a second if it's not zeroed, and twice every half a second if it is zeroed, so that's if the zero error is within plus or minus 10. And this is the main power calculation, which goes on every half a second, or every 470 milliseconds. We basically take that average value that we calculated, the average torque value, multiply it by the calibration value and by cadence, divided by this value here, and that gives you power in watts. This zero error here, that was literally just out of interest, just to see if the power meter is staying zeroed. So that's basically the current sensor value minus this minimum value, as I explained earlier. And that gives you the zero error. So that should be zero if there's no force on the crank. And then we also, for transmission, we calculate the percentage in the battery. Now, this would obviously have to be, these values have to be modified depending on your exact uh, potential divider setup. It would actually make more sense, as I've mentioned here, to use a map function here. So I will be changing that in later versions. So you just map it 0, 100%, whatever ADC values you're receiving. And this is where the data is transmitted out. And I've set this at the moment for cadence so that you can use to check that you're getting accurate cadence. But you can also, it could be the battery percentage instead. And that is basically all of the code. As I said, this is someone else's code. I've just taken off the internet, so I'm not going to go into that. That just controls the interrupts for the buttons. And hopefully you'll be able to find some of this useful for developing your own code. And uh, thank you for watching.